What's up, nerds? Nerd! Master here with another magic puzzle quest. Today's quest, let's get some goodies, my friends. We're going to do another edition of What's in the Vault. We've got a ton of prizes to collect, so I wanted to give you an update here as to what's been going on. So I just reached level 180. I took a snapshot of it because I was actually on the ranch when I did it. I couldn't get you guys a live video of it. Now, why that's important to you and why you should pay attention to that, what winds up happening is if you go to your vault, you wind up seeing that you get a standard booster from... Uh, the, the latest set, which includes M21, which are these are the only cards that are really missing right now. All right, so we'll go into the vault here in just a second, but let's first play. Oh, what's in the vault? Uh, every Tuesday, you get a new set of cards that are available for your elite collections. And I'm gonna share with you quickly which ones are worth going after and which ones are a waste of time. So we'll start all the way at the bottom with the elite packs from Core Set 2019. This is obviously out of standard right now. So we just wanna view all the cards that are in here and talk about what chase cards are here. Ball Lightning is a chase card. Uh, it's nothing else that needs to be said about that. When this creature enters the battlefield, it gets plus X plus O, where X is equal to the red mana bonus at the end of turn. Destroy this creature. Double Strike, Haste. It does all kinds of powerful things for 10. It works well in combo decks because it's 10 or less. It's basically swinging for at least, at least 12, plus your mana bonus. Uh, and if you use it with a Fiery Emancipation, you can one-shot kill people if it reaches 15 in a Koth deck or something like that. Really ridiculous, absolutely a chase card. Gin of Wishes, oh my gosh, such a chase card. When this creature enters the battlefield, create three Gin Wishes. This is a token support with two shield. Uh, this support can't be reinforced. Whenever this support is destroyed, draw a card and give it full mana. You know I like full mana, absolutely a chase card. You use something like this with uh, Scape Shift and Rupture Spire, and that is the preferred combo. You run those two things as your engine plus this card, and you have yourself a legacy beatdown that is really, really fun. Okay, so there's one chase card out of nine for Mythics, and there's one out of four Masterpieces that you can chase. So I'm gonna say there's two out of 15, basically. So one in eight and a half, one in nine is your odds of pulling cards that are absolutely great, with a couple of default cards that are pretty good for those. Ravnica. Ravnica will be rotating out in September, so be mindful of that. Not a very good set to go after. Uh, Theros. Let's spend a second talking about Godsend. If Godsend did what I thought Godsend would do, then Godsend would be a chase card for sure. It's not. It's very disappointing. Not a chase card in my opinion. Sorry. Really, there is nothing, nothing in this set that makes me scream, you gotta go get that card or it's a chase card. Sorry, it's not. So then which brings us to the most broken set in standard right now, which is Ikoria. So many good cards in here. Um, I'm still, I haven't play tested Kelsian yet, so I can't say if it's a chase card or not yet. They're masterpieces, you always take them. Selective adaptation, I know there's a way to break it, I just haven't done it yet. All right, let's get to the chase cards. Urgent Ultimatum. Fetch the first four different monocolored cards from your library. Those cards gain full mana, then exile this card. Exile a random monocolored mono card from your hand and disable each other card in your hand until end of turn. So your next turn, you get to cast those cards for free. Not as good as Eerie, not as good as in. Well, inspired maybe. Nowhere near as good as Genesis Ultimatum. Um, but a still really good chase card. I think you should have it for your black, green, and blue decks uh, if you don't have those other two. Luminous Broodmoth is broken. You've seen my, if you haven't seen my Broodmoth machine gun or my Judy's got a moth machine gun, uh, go check that video out. I literally show you how to break this with Judith and uh, Uro or Kraxos. Any one of those three combined, you get Judith down first, then Luminous Broodmoth, then Kraxos. And essentially, you're doing two points of damage to your opponent. It's an unlimited loop that winds up winning. I think it's a bug, but it still works. I just tested it. It does work in the platform right now. So I think Luminous, because of that, is a chase card. Uh, uh, <laughs> Ruinous Ultimatum, the best removal spell in the game, period. Legacy and Standard, it is by far the best. It's expensive at 22 mana, but there's so many different ways to cheat it out. It doesn't matter. Destroy each opposing creature and each opposing non-land support. This effect can affect vanguard supports everything you got on your side of the board put it in the trash you start over i'm gonna stay where i am but you start over right great card powerful card devastating card uh c dash octopus is okay come on let's get to it what's the most important card in the set song of creation this card support card enchantment eight mana red green or blue red green Support card enchantment, when you draw your first land support, each turn it gains full mana. Powerful enough. I never use that. When you cast a non-land card, draw two cards, resourceful five. The first cards in your hand gain three mana for each other card in your hand. At the end of your turn, discard all but the first card from your hand. 
This is the most powerful card in standard right now. Get it. It is the standard version of Omniscience, but better because it does it every single turn, right? Omniscience is still a better card, period, because of what it can combo with. But this card in and of its own can fuel any deck that's red, blue, or green. Literally, 80%, 90% of your Planeswalkers can use Song of Creation. She's a beast. It's a powerful card. Get this card. All right. We follow <laughs> Song of Creation with the most powerful mutate uh, creature on the board. And in this case, uh, Creature Elemental Dinosaur Cat, 15 for a 6-6. Six, six. Flying mutate, first strike. Mutation, pick one of the first three non-creature cards from your graveyard that costs 10 or less. Fetch that card, it gains full mana. The combo is the, the unlimited loop. Court of Calling in your hand, you want it muted, so you can't cast it. It's got full mana. You have repeated reverberations in your graveyard. You mutate a creature, whatever it is. You get repeated reverberation. You get two copies of Court of Calling. You take one of those copies of Court of Calling, or you take both of them, and you go grab the creature that you mutated with Vadrock. Then what happens is you get to go, once you do that again, you get to go pull that repeated reverberations again, and you get to do the combo over and over and over and over again until you got a creature big enough to swing over and kill Greg in one swap. Very powerful stuff. Love it. So that's five out of ten. So it's a, you got a 50-50 shot. You got a one and two shot of pulling with 400 pinkies a card worth pulling out of the set. But of course, far and away the best card in the game right now. Song of Creation. It's not even close. All right, Core 21. I mean, how do we even follow that up? Uh, with what's in here right now, I love Brash Taunter. I think it's a chase card. It's it's a chase card for me because of how much I enjoy it. It's so fun. I've been building a bunch of stuff with it. Double Vision is not a chase card anymore. Uh, double Vision is clunky to give you a double spell. It's not worth it. I actually really like Grim Tutor. I think that is a chase card uh, because it really helps smooth out your black deck draw so you can get into the cards you want and get it half mana. Uh, pick one of the first four different creature or different cards from your library. Fetch that card, it gains half of its mana, and then lose six life. That is nothing in the grander scheme of things. I've been playing with it in a couple of my black des decks. It is very good. Stormwing Entity, I know that Nalthazar says this is a chase card. I'm not impressed with it. I, I may, I, it's just because I haven't played with it yet. So I will trust him on that and say that you can go for it. Uh, you know what's funny? Burlfist Oak is a chase card. This is a really good rare. Like This is the best card in this set of, 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 these, of this pack of elite cards that I think are worthwhile. I think it's really good. It's a good substitute for Leafkin Avenger. If you don't have Leafkin Avenger, it basically does the same thing, except he has to go over and actually swing at your opponent versus just shooting him in the face with Leafkin Avenger. That's the only difference between those two cards. So for me, two chase cards so far. Brash Taunter I'm going to throw in there. Grim Tutor. Kervik maybe. And then Stormwing Entity I'm, gonna, I'm just going to trust uh, Nalthazar on that. So that's three out of nine. So you get a one in three chance. That's actually pretty good odds that you're going to get something that's fairly decent. And that's... Oh, what's in the vault? I didn't know I had that. All right, let's get into the good stuff. Okay, wish me some veto. Get me some veto, because I don't want to go spend, spend 400 pinks to go get it. Let's see. Come on, give me some good cards, man. There's a lot of rares I'm still chasing, too. Mythic, Grim Tutor, cool. Pick one of the first four different cards from your library. Fetch that card. It gains half of its mana, then lose six life. I like this card. I like that card. Blue, Discontinuity. While it's in your hand, this card's worthless. Right now, it's worthless. While in your hand, this card cost is reduced by four during your turn. Until end of turn, players can't activate loyalty and vanguard abilities. Disable all cards in each player's hand and all the players on the uh, all the creatures on the battlefield until end of turn. Okay, so the only place this is going to matter is if they rework Flash to where I can cast something at the beginning of my opponent's turn. If I can cast something at the beginning of my opponent's turn, this is going to be bomb. This is going to be incredibly awesome. Right now, as it sits, it's worthless. It just keeps creatures from attacking you, is essentially what it is. All right, come on, Vito. Massacre Worm. It's mythic, though. I'll take it. When this creature enters the battlefield, each opposing creature gets minus four, minus four until end of turn. When an opposing creature dies, your opponent loses six life. This is something that I wanted to experiment with with another card I have. I'll show you here in a minute. Brash Taunter, yes! <laughs> this creature can block only one creature per turn. If able, when this creature blocks or is blocked, it deals X damage to your opponent's Planeswalker. X is the power of the opposing creature. This creature gains Berserker until end of turn. I'm going to break this thing. I have all kinds of plans for it. Maybe we'll even do that right now. Multicolor card, let's see. Uh, Elsha. It's a masterpiece. Hey, I pulled a masterpiece. I should be grateful. Uh, it's a Ginny Monk. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's funny in Navajo. Prowess, this creature gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. Then draw a card. If that card is a non-creature card, it gains flash. When you cast a card during your opponent's turn, this creature gets plus two, plus two. Okay. Okay. Uh, until end of turn. That's the thing that bothers me. I hate the, the till end of turn stuff. But hey, all mythics and masterpieces. I'll take it from that. That's really great. Let's get to the gameplay. Today's quest, Brash Taunter, a mythic. Uh, 15, red, 4-4, four, four, damage prevention. He also has a defender. Uh, when this creature, uh, this creature can block only one creature per turn, if able. When this creature blocks or is blocked, it deals X damage to your opponent's planeswalker. X is the power of the opposing creature. Activate three red. This creature gains berserk until end of turn. Good times. Fun card. I pulled this and I was like, yes, I'm going to build a goblin deck. And then I started promptly testing it in a goblin deck and it had no place in a goblin deck. He is the only goblin that you need. Let me show you why. Because we're going to not just have a tiny little guy that can take damage, we're going to colossify the Taunter. That's right, we're going to use Colossification. This is a green spell card, 21 mana, it's pricey. Target creature you control gets plus 20, plus 20. Then disable that creature until end of turn. The problem with this card is, is it's a rare from Ikoria, and you obviously disable your creature. So what good is he until the end of turn, right? We don't want to wait till the next turn. We want him to do the things now, so we give him Sudden Spinners. It's a spell card for seven. It's green. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus three until end of turn. Okay. Then that creature gains reach. Nice. Uh, so we can defend flyers now, right? And if it's disabled, enable it. <laughs> so what Colossification taketh away? Sudden Spinners giveth back. All right. Next, Dwarven Mind for a little red conversion. Gets two red mana at the beginning of your turn. And when, another thing that's really helpful, when the support enters the board, if there are eight or more red gems, create three dwarf tokens. So if there is red, it helps you out. Titanith Rex, my favorite cycle card in the set, 22 for 11-11. I don't usually use him, I just use him for the trample to give it to uh, the taunter, because he doesn't have trample, and there's nothing more furiating than having a 30-30 creature swinging for head to get stopped by a 1-1 one -one with reach or defender. No, sir. That will not matter because this guy, when you cycle him, this card for two, cycling two, he gives trample to target creature. And if in a pinch, you can pull him out and he works well from there. Shadow Spear, because we like life gain. Support card, artifact equipment, it's another rare. While on the board, this first creature, you get plus three, plus three, gains life leak and trample. You want to know what's really important, especially when you're playing in Legacy? While this is on the board, your opponent's creatures lose and can't gain hexproof and prevent damage. Very frustrating, very annoying when you got cards that do that. We like haste. Molten Echoes, 13 red mana. When a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, reinforce it until the end of turn. That creature gains haste until the beginning of your next turn. I like it a lot. Demolish, because sometimes you just got to remove removals and supports. Thrill of Possibilities to dig through our deck a little bit faster. Discard a card, draw two cards. Okay, so this one thing is very infuriating. Uh, destroy effects still hit Taunter. Um, it should be indestructible. My, my recommendation, Octagon, is if you're going to make a creature indestructible, make it indestructible. Make destroy effects not work on it. Allow only exile effects to work on them, just like in Paper Magic. That's not the case in Puzzle Quest. So instead, what we have to do is we have to make our creature a little bit less easy to remove. Hence, we want some hexproof. Uh, and again, I'm keeping it on the popper build with this one. So it's Slippery Bog Bonder. First time I've ever used it. It's a 9 for a 3-3 creature at Flash and Hexproof. This creature itself has Hexproof. But when this creature enters the battlefield, target creature you control gains Hexproof. Then that creature gains all the basic Evergreen abilities from the first creature card in your exile and in your opponent's exile. So if you have this creature in exile, like you have two of them, you exile one of them, you could have your creature get Hexproof, which you're going to wind up doing anyways. But, you know, something that's food for thought, something to go there. This is the popper build. Let me go show you what Brash Taunter does in Popper. Let's get to it. All right, so we are in Rising Tensions, uh, House Demir. We're going to be facing off Kuriyama with uh, Vraska here. So let's let the quest begin, my friends. Swords up. Let's rock and roll. All right, here we go, my friends. Let's see, we got Brash Taunter. We want him on the board as quickly as possible. We're going to mute Sudden Spinners. Uh, and let's see, green and red. That's all that matters for... Oh, yeah, we're using... I forgot, Sam at the Tested. First uh, ability, target creature you control gets plus two, plus two, and double strike until end of turn. Affliction. Second ability, each creature you control gains Afflict, Berserker, and Trample. So we like that. This Afflict effect will stack with Afflict uh, from other sources. Uh, it's not until end of turn, so that's actually something we can do. I didn't realize that. 
Learning every day, my friends. And then Test of Might, create a support with when this uh, when a creature you control deals damage to your opponent, your opponent takes an extra eight damage. Sassy pants, right there. So, let's see. Red and green is the only thing that matters for Samet. So let's go here. So we can get a green drop. Look at that. Just like I designed it. Now it's going to give... It's going to give uh, Vraska here a five swap, so whatever. Whatevs. Not worried about it. And we get a five swap. Nice. All's fair. All right, so can I? Nope, I cannot. So let's do, let's do this. Actually, let's go here. Bam, bam. That gets that. Now I have this ability. I'm going to swipe this one. Give him trample. We get demolished. He does have something out, so let's go ahead and crush that. Maybe we can get something gooder. Let's put this out. If we can get it out, I'll get it out. Look at that. It's a that's something good. Great. But it is not. Alright, so that goes. Do we get another landfall? Not enough. Okay. Now you're probably wondering why didn't you just take the second ability or the first ability? Oh look at that. See? Targetable. Targetable. You gotta have untargetable things. To allow these guys to work their magic. All right, so since I want to get through the deck as quickly as possible and show you the combos, let's go here. Boom. That didn't do it. <laughs> That's how important it is you catch your green and red drops. Those are the only ones that matter. They're the only ones that matter. Uh, let's go for it. Let's just do it because we want the taunter on the board. Shadow Spear and Colossification. There it is. All right. Now we need to go get that uh, spinner back. All right, so we've got Titaneth. Let's just go ahead and spin that. All right, Thrill of Possibility. We don't need Shadow Spear now, per se. Um, I want to hold off casting my Tauntra until I have uh, the Bog Dog or Dog Bog or whatever the heck it is in my hand so that I can give it some, some type of protection against targetable effects. All right, so I have red on the bottom there. She has Slippery Bog Donner. Bog Bonder. So I'm going to mute those. And I'm going to put Classification here. And I actually want Molten Echoes just because I want to have some haste to go along with it as well. Uh, let's go here because we can possibly roll into a green just like that. Just like we planned. Oops. Um, I'll take a thrill of possibility out. I'm playing in Rising Tension so I forgot not to use those activated abilities so I won't use them going forward. Kind of cheats you into what your cards you're looking for. We're just looking at top deck. So you can see what this will do under normal circumstances. All right, so we got a full hand right now. We don't need two of you, right? We already have one of you. Yep, we already got one of you out. Um, I have half a mind to, to cycle this the Titaneth, but we're going to keep it just for keeping's sake. Red is there, green, anywhere green? No, there's no green. All right. And I think we're ready to go on the next turn. Okay. Here we go. Come on. All right, so we're going to get rid of this Titan Rex. You know, we don't need another thrill of possibility. And I just want to get these on the board ASAP, so let's get this done now. Do I have a red or green? Oh, I see a five swap first off. Let's do that. That works. Okay, cool. So that has haste. That does too. Give that hexproof. Let's see if she's got something for me over there. Um, and I've got, let's go ahead and do this so that each of my creatures have the killing strokes. It takes killing strokes, it takes killing strokes to win the world. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Disco blue. Ah. All right. So now that we've got uh, taunting or a brash taunter out. See what she brings. Ah, she brings out double, double dude here. Let's see what we got. What do we got? Uh, Vraska. Okay, so death touch creatures. That's fine. We're going to be doing some death touch damage, and let's let's just let's colossify, shall we? Let's go get some red and green mana here. Where is the red and green mana? That is a possibility, but it is a denial. All right. Come on, Vraska, bring me some critters now. I want to see you bring some stuff that is not going to exile my creatures. See, all those cards in hand that aren't going and doing anything, those are cards that stay there because they target target creature. 
Ah, uh, she took my classification, didn't she? Yes, she did, you sneaky little sneaker. This is why it's important you have creatures that allow you to, or cards that allow you to go uh, hexproof. That was good, that was good, bam. So it takes another point of damage. Nothing major, but it's important. It, it adds up. I need, to, I need to draw into a spinner here. We getting a spinner? Oh, those spinners. Terrible, terrible. All right. We're going to go here. And that will give us all the mana. All right, we're going to classify you just because it's time. We're going to cast that. There's sudden spinners. Did we cast it? We did. Look at that. Landfall. 22 in haste. Bam. That kills that one. That's all right, though. Because the hexproof stays with the taunter. And now we've got a 24 24 ready to swing with trample and hexproof. Look at that. See? That would have been my taunter. And we want to get those cards out of her hand. All right. So let's give him double strike. Let's just end the game, shall we? Shall we? 26, is that going to be enough? It's not. So let's give him a bit more. Do we have red mana we can swing with? Or green mana we can collect on? Yeah, we can do it there. All right. Bam. Is that game? Not quite. Oh, it is. <laughs> yes, baby. There you go. Game. And that's how Samet, the tested, winds up winning the game. Plus, it has lifelink. So it winds up rejuvenating itself in between events or, or games. So you can go and you're going to continue to play. Bam. 60 points there for mastering. And we move forward. Awesome. That's the popper build. Lots of different things we could do to it. Let's go take a look at it. And several different cards come to mind when we're actually going to go edit this out. So if we look at Nylea might be something that's good. At the end of your turn, fetch the first creature card from your library. Then each creature card in your hand gains two mana. So she gets a little bit of, of mana out of that. Uh, he does. Mirror March, of course, is obviously great, but let me just show you the, let me just show you the real build. All right, so, Brash Taunter, Cornerstone. Mirror March, because why not just have one when you can reinforce it multiple times instead of the other card that we're using? Song of Creation, because we want to ramp everything up. Finale of Devastation, because we want him to have haste. Finale of Revelation, so we can fill our hand quickly and start feeding our Song of Creation play. Colossification, because we want a big Taunter. Sudden Spinnerets, because we want a, a big Taunter that's not disabled. Tamiyo Collector of Tales, because we really don't want to discard all of the cards. We want to keep them and continue to ramp up our hands. Shadow Spear, because we want to gain life. And Fiery Emancipation, because we want to do it three times faster than we did before. <laughs> I love this card. Let's go get to it, my friends. And I'm using Sarkin the Brokon, because he is definitely a devastating play. Let me show you how it works. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, first off, what do we got in hand? We got song, we got finale, and we got classification. What else could we ask for? Let's go bam. Let's go bam, bam. No, I didn't mean to do that. Shoot, sorry. Uh, we'll, we'll throw that on the fire. All right, one more. Bam, got it. Go get taunter. Dupe. And one more. Did that do it? It did. So let's make him big. I think he's just going to sit still for a turn. I don't think he's going to do anything else. Yep, everything else falls under the graveyard. Okay. Turn two. Sudden spinnerets. There was that thing. We'll go here. Oh, that didn't, didn't do it. Not quite enough. Just a bit. Just a bit outside. All right, we're gonna go here. All right. Yes, another taunter, please, and thank you. We will, yeah, we have to cast it so we don't lose some of these abilities. Not now. Gets bigger, gonna keep going. There's that, not now. And now we don't lose, oh, we do. Because that is Tamiyo. She didn't quite hit the board. But we should be done in another turn or two unless they target it and kill it. No. All right. And you might be wondering, why don't you use non-targetable... Like, why don't you make this card not uh, targetable with um, 
uh, some type of hex proof or something like that. Because I don't need to. This this deck wins so much faster that it doesn't matter. It just wins. And in fact, what's funny about this? Let's see if we have anything in here. Let's let's uh, let's colossal. No, let's do fire emancipation. That's the beauty of having that out. We don't need that. Uh, we do need that. And we can go here. Is that game? Oh, I, I messed up again. Let's let's just go here. Select the last one. Boom and boom. That draws two cards. That also ups my blue mana bonus. Gives me another taunter. And I don't think it does anything else for me on the board. But it does give me Mirror March, which takes off. And you can see how crazy ridiculous this gets right away. The neat part about it is, is if they do get any creatures out, essentially it's a body that's blocking, and when it does three mana damage, or any damage, any combat damage to it, winds up beating your opponent. Now, some things to note about this, this deck. Um, it does not... It, it's only in blocking or being blocked. So, things like... Uh, I, I tried cheating with it with, like, uh, Justice Strike, and those types of things where it did damage to hit, or fighting... Uh, uh, spells where it would fight other creatures, opponents, creatures across the board to see if that would cause additional damage. No go. Didn't didn't go. Didn't work. Uh, it's only when it's blocked or being blocked. So it strictly limits it to combat damage. But not combat damage as in a fight effect. Combat damage as in blocking or being blocked. Very interesting setup that they did for it to work around it. There's only one time that it's going to be able to do that. And it only blocks against one creature, so you know, you're not going to be able to block against others. Unless there's a way you can give your opponent's creatures, all of them, Berserk. Uh, which there are in Legacy. I don't know of any standard ways to do it, but I haven't tested that out. So, Alright, so we're going to face one of the hardest decks, I think, in Standard right now. Which is one specific build. And I know what's already going to be in here, because I don't even look at it. It's Nissa World Waker. It's being, piloted, it's being piloted by Greg, but the deck was designed by... Uh, let's see, Shinjagami, Shinjagami, hope I'm saying that correctly, which means it's going to have Leafkin Avenger in it, which means we have very limited time frame to go pull this thing off and get it done. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to let Fire Emancipation be the first thing that comes out. Let's go there. All right. Let's keep our fingers crossed. We've got to be fast. Got to be faster than I think four turns with, with World Waker. All right, so there's that. I'm going to go here. All right, come on, man. All right, so there, that's the for the mana conversion for the other one. Actually, you know what? Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna hold a turn, and I'm gonna try to beef this puppy out. Let's see if this works. Uh, no, not now. All right, so I gotta get this to fire now. Look at this, five drop, baby, yeah. Uh, we're going to take it because it's going to give us the mana bo bonus and it's also going to fill our hand. It's also going to give those cards six mana and we get an extra turn. All right, so let's go here. We're going to go blue into green. Oh, I didn't, didn't do it. It's okay. Still get the taunter. Twelve mana. Zing. Go the battleship. That's 36 points of damage. And let's see, she's going to attack me for 20. Look at that. <laughs> that is the beauty of Taunter. I don't care how big your creatures are. We gotta win, man. We gotta win the game. Let's see if I can get that to turn white. It did. Cool. Red, red. That drops Tamio. That does another 12 points of damage. I think this is game next turn. Wang. That's game. And I didn't even classify or do any of the fancy stuff. I just put him out there and let him do his thing. And that's a great thing about him. As long as he doesn't get targeted, which Green doesn't have a lot of targeting ability, he's a beast, man. He's just straight up killer. And just like that, Fire Emancipation and Brash Taunter. Game. I like it. This is, this is killing me. Come on. <laughs> All right. Garouk, let's see. Who are we fighting here? Garouk is played by... Standrew, Standrew, yes, Standrew, that sounds good. All right, so we're going to get Mirror March uh, and Spinners loaded and ready for our next drop. Let's go here. 
All right. Another spinnerets. We go green, red there. No green. Nope, not now. Love to use that ability, but we're not going to cheat. We're just going to see what it does. And I like playing in the Rising Tensions events because the decks that you're going to face are usually a little bit stronger than what you're going to face anywhere else. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to go here. Okay. There's Tamio. She'll help us dig through our deck a little bit faster. I haven't seen Song and Tamio combined to do anything yet. This would be a good, good combo here. Look at that. That is pretty. Good job. I right, see the next drop I want to take if they don't take it. They took it. Uh, let's see. We don't need another Tamio. Let's go. Do we have anything in the graveyard? Nope, not yet. All right, confirm. Let's go get something. Let's actually take that instead. And we're going to throw that here. Here. No landfall. Not now. Okay, left me the blue and the white landfall. All right, come on now. I'm going to get this done. How many of these do we need? I don't need that many. Actually, let's draw a card. There's classification. Let's start charging that up. And let's go here. Boom. Oh, I messed up. I should have taken that additional draw. It's all right, though. Here we go. There's Brash, but I don't need another Brash. I'm going to get one right now. Let's see. What do I have in the graveyard? One check, trick with uh, Tamio is you can actually check what's in your graveyard by hitting the minus three. And it, there that is. I need that. Okay, let's go here. Let's ditch this. We want to draw two cards into... Um, yeah, that's about what we've got to do. We'll go here. Not now. That draws that. That grabs me the taunter. Okay, do I get one more? I don't. I don't do it. Okay. Well, that's thirty-six. But on the next turn, we should be able to make the the whole shenanigans trick go off. As long as Garuk doesn't do anything to destroy me, I don't think he really has anything though. That will do that. He's blocking four. He takes four. Butimus, Butimus. All right, here we go. Let's see. What do we want to play? All right, so we're not drawing a card. We don't need two of those. We actually don't need that now, just simply because that's where we are. We do have two of you. Yeah, that works. Okay. Um, what do we have in the graveyard? Uh, I'll take another Tamiya. All right, so we're going to go here. Is that enough? No, it is not. But this is. Here we go. All right. So, no. We Colossify. He gets disabled. Not now. We get Fire Emancipation on the board. We Sudden Spinnerets. That re-enables. Not now. We give him even beefier beef. He's got lifelink. He attacks. Game. And that is how Colossified Taunter works. <laughs> okay, so would I make any changes to the deck? Um, the, about the most flex cards you have in here that you can take out is probably Mirror March, because with Mirror March, with Fire Emancipation and all of the ramp and everything else you're doing to it, not really necessary. Uh, Finale of Revelation is a great hand starter, but you don't necessarily need it right out the gate. Uh, you might want to try some other cards in its place. Um, some other cards might you might want to consider trying would be like High Alert. Uh, Ember Cleave, of course, is the big 10,000 pound gorilla. Uh, I just don't like, I don't like using Ember Cleave just because it, it costs so much to get out. Unless I have something that maybe use the Starfield of Nyx to just bring it back or use uh, Near Ultimatum approach. Take out Tamio, use Eerie, and just load up the board with everything, which might be a really fun play. I didn't even consider throwing that in here. Uh, I may go back and play a couple more games with Eerie just to see what it does. Uh, and, and that would be a great way to, to play things out. The challenge is, the real question becomes, all right, is, is the card good? Is Brash Taunter good? 
it's it is good it's just good though it's not great with other options available to us like leafkin avenger and uh, that combo deck that's out there in Popper Build or Quartzwood Crasher. Quartzwood Crasher is the stick by which I measure all other creatures by. Um, is this better than Quartzwood Crasher? No, it's not. Is it fun? It's so much fun. So if it's not in a, an event, if it's not an event you need to worry about, or if it's an event that um, that that is uh, meeting an objective, which is kill a bunch of creatures, and you can give them little token cards, which there is a lot of new things in Ikoria, and an M21 that give your opponent creatures, then this becomes a really fun play to go after. What would make this card great is if they would actually give it indestructible, like destroy effects didn't work against it. I really would implore uh, Octagon to change the, the, the prevent damage to indestructible or to have certain cards just be indestructible. We've always had goblins that have been that way. We just love the idea of an unkillable goblin they're not very powerful, but they can become very powerful if you do you build your decks around them. And they're a lot of fun to do that with. One exile spell, one elimination way that just takes the feet out from underneath them. Exile will always deal with those types of cards, but make your opponent build around this type of thing. It gives this meta something fun to do, and it keeps the, the, the gameplay interesting. But as it sits, destroy destroys everything. It just, it just destroys it. So damage effects are, there's no real reason to run damage effects when destroy gets the job done. So there, there's a lot of counterbalance that needs to happen, I think, within the game, but I love this guy. I think he's a heck of a lot of fun. If you can grab him, grab him, and go build a deck around him, go colossify him, go uh, spinnerets on him, and uh, just go to town, man, because if they have any kind of creature that's coming at you, no matter how big it is, it's Red's answer to Razia, but it doesn't ever end. You can use it as many times as you like, and it's pretty fun. So. My friends, what did I miss? Is there something you would throw in here? Comment below. Listen, like, subscribe, comment. It's really important to me. Look, look, look. I'm going to get serious right here. Look at this. <laughs> so look, working hard to get this channel up and running and doing a lot of great things with it. I know most of you have not subscribed. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. If you enjoyed the content here, if you enjoyed the little antics we do, uh, you know, it really helps the channel out. I'm not making any money off of this thing at all. So I'm not, I need your help paying my internet bill by basically hitting the like button, subscribing, leaving a comment, all of those things feed the algorithm and it puts us in front of other people who may be enjoying this content as well. And frankly, we don't have enough people playing this game. If you're new to Puzzle Quest and you've never played the game before, chime off. Let me know that you're a brand new person to this and you'd like some pointers on where to get started. I think it's a fantastic game. If you're a Magic the Gathering arena player or a card a cardboard player and you're not, you know, yet exposed to this game, it's not Magic the Gathering, it's a different game, but it's just as intricate and just as good, I think in many ways than Magic the Gathering, but it you can play it mobile app wise and I fell in love with it because of it. I was desperate to find a mobile app um, of Magic the Gathering because I love Magic cardboard so much. I actually enjoy this. I find myself playing this because I can play it without having an opponent. I can play it uh, with still having the, the collecting of the cards that I really enjoy doing. And it's just a lot of fun. And we are a part of coalitions. We have a lot of fun stuff to do. So what do you like about the game if you're playing? Let me know, comment below, like, subscribe, and get the notifications. That's really important. That really helps the channel out. Until our next quest, my friends, swords up.